let's continue the Tour of Heroes application. In the previous videos we created the project and we started creating the hero editor and we've got to this stage here. In this video we'll be able to display the list. Okay, so right now we've only got one bit of data here and that comes from the we use this hero interface to sort of define the structure of our data and the hero data itself um, uses this interface and it has this ID of one and name of windstorm now uh, to get this working between the HTML and the JavaScript or TypeScript and back again we use this hero.name uh, sort of uh, as the variable of which is the object so hero.name uh, and we use this ng model to bind it so the curly um, braces is uh, from the template to the typescript file and the square brackets is uh, usually data from the TypeScript into the HTML. So there's a two-way binding there. So we'll extend our list in the TypeScript. So right now we've only got one. Um, I'm not going to create this separate file because we typically data is from a remote server um, and I think it's good enough just to leave it in the component for now because we'll end up refactoring it into a service and we do like to use services uh, for data that we may reuse but just for now we would um, we'll just use this thing here uh, we won't need the export either we'll just use the constant and we actually I don't even think we need the constant uh, but we can just delete this here and hero heroes and or upper um, sort of capitalized sort of implies that it's constant um, and this time we've got a hero array rather than just one standalone hero and that is an array of uh, heroes so that means this here can now go which means we will get an error if we save that. Um, so yeah, there's the error because hero.name no longer exists. Uh, so let's just keep following along. We don't need to import it into our component and we don't need to set it to a variable within the component. Um, let's just call it heroes lowercase so we don't get confused uh, or oh, I'd probably confuse you more heroes oh there's an e in it heroes just so it's consistent with what we're reading um, and then in the heroes component we can So this, I don't think this will work I'll just, because we've got a whole list, so we will need this ng4. So let's just go ahead and delete this and save this. Uh, yeah, so we do get the error. So there's directives in Angular, which, um, so the ng4 uh, has an asterisk before it, and that sort of, so we'll add this to the class, or to the li, and I think this styling may need to be added as well. Yes. So that means, okay, so now we've got a list of all of the IDs and the corresponding names, my heroes. Um, the styling hasn't been uh, added yet but 
the main thing is using this directive and when we use a directive we have this asterisk and ng for angular so it's an angular sort of for loop and it's saying for each hero let hero of heroes and heroes is coming from the TypeScript so that means hero represents each one of these objects in the array so let hero of heroes and then everything inside of this ng4 will be repeated that many times so hero.id, hero.name will cycle through all of the IDs and names for each element in the array and then they'll be outputted in a span as a, like, as a list item and that's what we can see cool so li is the host element um, okay yep don't forget the asterisk it's a critical part of the syntax okay so now let's style the heroes. Um, we've already got this by default when we made the style and paste in the private CSS styles for the heroes compiler. So you'll find them in the. Okay. So we can add these styles. Oh, you can just click paste, copy, and that's in the heroes component. So if I open the, that up, and I save those stylings, I can close that file. Yeah, nice. So we've got this nice styling here. Okay, cool. So if we go back to where we're working at, add a click event binding. Okay, so just like we, okay, so let hero of heroes, and then we use this binding here. So what this is saying, essentially, so another one of these. just one is it oh this one something I got removed okay that's cool yeah so recall that in the curve parentheses that's um, passing uh, something from the template or the TypeScript or the you know what we see sort of thing so in this case it's a list item, so it's passing data from the uh, list item into the uh, TypeScript file, so from template to TypeScript, and there's all sorts of um, events. You could also have um, mouse enter and all the traditional JavaScript events. You can put that inside these curve brackets, and that just adds an event. So when you click on the list item, it's going to call this function on select, which we haven't created yet, and it's going to pass the data in for hero. And recall that hero was uh, each individual object, so it's going to pass that data, the corresponding ID and name for whatever list we click on, and that's going to be passed as an argument uh, for the hero into the TypeScript. So right now we get an error because we haven't actually made that. So we need to add the click event handler. And to do that we can do this. We just copy this code in here. And we'll pass that into the TypeScript. Uh, let's see here. Typically, that goes below, like properties go before the constructor and on init, and methods usually go after. So, selected hero 
that's of type hero. We're not sure of what it is just yet, but we know that it has this form. And so when we call the onSelect method, uh, it's a hero of type hero. Um, it doesn't have any return statements. It's just so it returns a void type. And to access properties from within this class, just like in regular object or in programming, um, we're referring to this particular instance of the selected hero. Um, so that means selected hero needs the this keyword before it, and then this selected hero will be equal to hero, which is basically what we select in the list. So whatever we select here, say we select narco, that hero data for narco, ID 12 and name narco, that's going to be passed in as a hero object. This hero object is of type hero, and then we set this selected hero to that particular hero. Okay. So add a details section. Currently you have a list in the component template. To click on a hero on the list and reveal details about that hero, you need a section for the details to render in the template. Add the following to the heroes component beneath the list section. Okay, so let's just copy that. I always like to have one extra line at the end. So let's see what we got here. So selected hero dot name is uppercase with details. So this is similar before to what we did created earlier and then deleted. Um, except this time we now have this selected hero, which is bound to this. Um, but it may not work initially because we haven't actually clicked on anything initially. Um, and then we're outputting the data. We're using this binding syntax with input, a two-way binding ng model. So we can click from the HTML or the template, set the selected hero in the TypeScript, and then retrieve that back again into the input. So that's all good. But yes, we do get this error. And, oh, okay, so that's part of it. Heroes component error, TypeScript cannot read property name of undefined because it's undefined initially because nothing's been clicked on and the fix is to hide it with ng if so just like we got the for directly in angular we got an asterisk ng for the angular if notation and what we can do is we can just add that surrounding our code block and if you downloaded the pretty extension and all the other extensions from the 11 um, best extensions of 2020 video, you'll see when you save that, you get that auto formatting, which is really nice. And so if selected hero, now I don't think, uh, let's have a look here. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so let's click on Narco. So now we've clicked on something. And that means now that we've clicked on something, the selected hero has now been assigned to something rather than undefined, which means this if statement here evaluates to true, thus rendering the uh, code block inside it. So that's cool. So why it works. Okay, we know why it works. So style the selected hero. It is difficult to identify the selected hero in the list when all LI elements look the same. Okay, did we... Okay, I don't... Oh, okay, so they added this uh, class. So we wanna highlight the uh, background 
and change the color of the text to white um, and we can do class binding so we can add and remove CSS classes conditionally um, so we've already written this class but to apply it we can use this um, sort of square bracket notation um, so some condition so class dot whatever the class name is and they've called it selected so if we take a look in the CSS just to confirm uh, selected yeah it appears they got this selected uh, sort of color thing going here if it's hovered um, so and that's set to uh, a boolean expression so if we have class dot selected uh, hero is equal to selected hero so let's just add that up here and when we save it we we'll get that nice reformatting so the hero recall hero is the object um, and if that's selected if that is equal to the selected hero which gets passed in so the hero gets passed in whatever we click is then the selected hero and if that's how it happens at the one we click is that then the class dot selected will uh, apply that class so and do dr iq and we can see that when we did the hover we get that blue and even now when it's not hovered it's got that light, uh, you know, more pale sort of blue with the white text in it so that's cool so we've got that class binding and that wraps up displaying a list so in the next video we'll create a feature component